to Trinidad in, well, nine years ago, um, a few months after I arrived, I committed what turned out to be the rather sensational indiscretion of introducing a, a steel band into the cathedral in Port of Spain to play for a, a service on Independence Day. And um, this had never been done before. I didn't realize it hadn't been done. But, um, and I didn't realize exactly what I was doing, uh, socially, that is. But I then discovered that none of the steel bandsmen read any music or, or were musicians in the academic sense. So I had to go into their practice yards and actually teach them note by note and man by man and so on what I wanted them to play in the cathedral and also of course um, through a learning process myself become familiar with what exactly a steel band is because I'd never been introduced to music from garbage cans before. But to me the steel bandsmen are the geniuses and, and they just need the, the, the guidance and the, the assistance of so many other agencies around them. But it's, a, mu it's a, a musical medium which boggles my mind. Without this man, Alan Gervais, the band simply could not exist. With just that hammer and that punch, converts ordinary, humble oil drums into sensitive musical instruments. Steel band exists because the men play on oil drums. And this is what caught my imagination, first fired it when I arrived in Trinidad. Music, brilliant music, coming from ordinary common or garden humble oil drums, which to me, coming from a, an industrial society of Great Britain, were just things for hawking oil around. But the, the primary agency that can be of help nowadays are, quite obviously, um, the oil companies, because it's not only an ecology movement, here we have music out of garbage cans, but it's, it's also a cultural movement as well, and also, of course, relates the rather um, the mundane aspect of the oil industry to a creative cultural thing like music.
to the land of the hummingbird, shouts of welcome were heard. When Rufus came to the land of the hummingbird, shouts of welcome were heard. His visit to the island is bound to be an epoch in local history, definitely marking the new era between Trinidad and America. Understand that the president had just been on a visit to Brazil and the Argentine. With Mr. Cordell Hall in attendance, yeah, they took part in a peace conference to support an atrocity and make the world safe for democracy. The greatest event of the century in the interest of suffering humanity. Father John Sewell, uh, he's an Episcopalian priest. We respect him for everything that he does, but he's a, of a different kind of a person. I mean, he's a priest, yes, but he looks at it, uh, at the steel band movement, as something which is a gift to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. In this band, which we have five different sections, is equivalent to instruments in a symphony orchestra. We have the tenors, which is equivalent to the first violin. Then we have the double tenors, which is equivalent to the second violin. Then we have the uh, double seconds, which plays uh, something like the woodwinds. We have the guitar, then the cellos, and then we have the bass, I mean, which we call the basses, and the percussions, which is something each group has. <laughs> I mean, we look forward to y'all coming back, and I mean, when I saw the paper, I about died. This band really used here um, for about two types of drums, like a piano, clean chord. This guy here, he's the the clown of the band, really. He um, gets everybody laughing, he jumps around. No inhibitions does Courtney have. It's useful to have somebody like Courtney who's not afraid to say anything to anybody. One of the fans is somewhere around, which is the first sound, first band, which play the melody. <laughs> Five bucks. I don't have it. Hey, it's good. I'm not. Huh? My father, I'm a beautiful body there, man. Fuck it. 
Just keep your eyes there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dog. Hey, dog. Hey, dog. At this point, we are in the process of getting ready for one of our performances. I would say that in this band, in particular, everyone helps one another. Uh, we do have this sort of family look within ourselves. There's about 26 of us, and uh, we make sure that uh, we do everything for the best interest of the group. Something of a miracle. The band has existed in such a, a friendly, amicable kind of way all these years. Living together, working together, eating together. This kind of really happy, joyful atmosphere in the dressing room here is is typical of the life of the Trinidad Steel Band, indeed typical of all Trinidadians and West Indians in general. Universal, that even though we cannot speak to you all, really, we can make our music do the job.
Yeah, close him. Yeah, close him. Yeah, close him. Monty, close him. Right, and kiss boy on his cheeks. The guy there. And Rufus kiss. With that! With that! One more. Go, go, go. One more. Ready?
we are pleased today to have a distinguished representative from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. In 1963, he was knighted by the Queen of England. He is now serving as ambassador to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present His Excellency, Sir Ellis Clark. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say what a pleasure it is for me to be here this afternoon and to see the appreciation which you have demonstrated for the music of my fellow countrymen. But above all, what these young men are doing is building bridges of human knowledge and human intercourse letting you see that people from some little island that lies off the coast of Venezuela, or as we prefer to say, Venezuela lies off Trinidad. <laughs> because sometime in the distant past, we were part of the mainland, and the mainland unfortunately drifted away. <laughs> we remained where we were. Words of mine would be dull compared with the throbbing, vibrant music of the steel band. But the steel band was conceived in the fertile minds of the youth of Trinidad and Tobago. And it was on VE night, 1944, that the beginnings of the steel band may be traced to. It was on that night, after the great carnival that Trinidad is celebrated for, had been suspended for a couple of years, that people spontaneously came onto the streets, didn't have instruments, but picked up anything around, and of course Trinidad abounds in steel drums, and they began to produce the rhythm that eventually became the melodic tunes that now delight your ear from the more refined steel band. If you saw our performers not only playing, but dancing, if you saw them behaving as they would at home, you would realize that there must be something to the sun and the sea. 